Hello everybody, welcome to the next Fatal Rose Creations tutorial in creating a Sims 4 mesh. So we've already gone over creating a mesh in Marvelous Designer and we have gone over two different ways to export from Marvelous Designer. There's what I call a low poly mesh and then what I call a high poly mesh. Um, we've already gone through what next steps to take with a low poly mesh. So now we're gonna do what next steps to take with high poly mesh. So granted, um, I guess I should say higher detailed mesh instead of high poly because these meshes don't always have to be high poly. You can do them and still have low poly count. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's something I tried to explain on my page, but in case it gets confusing, you know, just let me know. Hopefully that terminology makes some sense. Um, so the next part of this process is you finished in MD, you exported following the steps for the high poly mesh export. Now you're going to go into ZBrush. ZBrush is a 3D um, drawing program where you can manipulate your mesh. So of course, first thing you need to do is download the program. So all you need to do is go to Google, Google ZBrush, and you should get to this website. Um, you'll want, I mean, I guess depending on your financial situation, you can either buy the one-time purchase, which that is the real life price, <laughs> the yearly purchase, that is the real life price, or the monthly purchase. Now I'm sure if you did this one you save over time, but, you know. I have never actually worked with ZBrush Core, so I do not know what the difference is. The program that I use is just straight ZBrush. Um, <clears throat> if you are a student in college, there is a student package that is significantly cheaper than the regular package. I will link those instructions below. I'm not endorsing not paying for the program, but theoretically if one was to YouTube cost more cost efficient ways to acquire ZBrush, I'll leave that with you. I won't link it, but I'll leave that thought with you. So anyway, this is where you go to get ZBrush and then we fry up the program. So when you get into it, it's most likely first gonna look like this. Well, a box will pop up, you close that, then it'll look like this. Just click light box to make that bar go away then click import and go to wherever you saved the file we named MD. So that'll be this one. You won't see anything, just this circle. Just click, hold, and drag. Um, so now there's our shirt. Click edit and then we can click frame so we can see the whole thing. So first things we need to do is over here, actually, so if you just straight right click, or left click, I mean, you rotate the mesh. This is right click too. So yeah, right and left click, just do the same thing. Um, if you click frame down here, I normally use a drawing tablet, so I'm more familiar with these movements. So this is how you move it. You see I clicked here and I'm holding it, but I can go all over. Same thing with zoom. Click hold and then move it, and if you want to rotate there. I know that there's other keys to do it, but like I said, I normally use a drawing tablet and therefore can interact with these with my pen without having to use my mouse, so I'm not familiar with those other ways to move in ZBrush. But I think even doing, I use this with my mouse too, so. Anyway, now that we know how to move, and we got the mesh in here, we're gonna go to Poly Groups, click Auto Groups with UV, then Display Properties, click Double, now we can see the inside. 
And then go over here and click matte white pearl just so the colors are a little easy to see. Then we're going to go to transform and then click line and yeah. All right. So now we need to so with the low poly mesh and marvelous designer we remesh it. The reason why we don't do that with this type of mesh is because we're going to do it here in ZBrush. So I go to geometry and then to Z remesher. Now check keep groups, slide smooth group over, and our poly count is up here. Right now it's at 13. Let's just about double that 26. And then click Z remesh. <laughs> So we see the UV, which is, that's what the lines are, is basically the UV on top of the shirt. We see that it looks a little more organized. So now we can go back up to transform and just click line and take a look at it. Now we want to make it look more realistic, right? So we're going to go over here, still under geometry and click divide until this number here is above 1 million. Usually three, like three or four times. So, see you'll see it's 108 now. So that took three times and we got it over a million. And now you can see it's a lot smoother and a lot more realistic looking. So the reason why we did that is because now we're going to draw detail onto the mesh. So since this is a simple shirt, I'm not going to draw too much, but like, so click light box and then click brush. And then there are some basic brushes that it comes with, but you're probably going to want to purchase some and I can um, go over that. But I just want a seam, so we'll do this one. And so you can just test it. So obviously that's way too big. So just press Control Z, go over here, and let's take it down about half. That was like by three fourths, but it's fine. Oh. This is why I normally use a drawing tablet. If you can get a drawing tablet, I would utilize one. I will link the one that I use. It was expensive, <laughs> but it was it's worth it. And there are cheaper, holy cannolis, there are cheaper options. There we go. So, and the difference in colors are the separations in pieces. So this is the front shirt, this is the back shirt. So that's why I'm following this line because I want to create the illusion that the shirt is sewn right here. Which it is, but by looking at it you can't tell that. Now it has that little bit of decoration, so you can. And then I'm also going to use that same pattern to do this seam right here. Okay. And then I'm going to get just like a crease. So this one will probably do. And I'm going to go from the top of this line to that one down there. So that's way too hard. That's just cutting too much. Okay, that one's good. 
And it doesn't have to be exactly on the line. If you press F, this is what it looks like without the separations. So. But for drawing seams, it just makes sense for it to be on the lines. But for like what I'm doing around the sleeve, it doesn't have to be perfect. None of this has to be perfect. So then we can frame it, move it around, take a look at it. And so that's how it looks without um, actually seeing the lines. And of course you don't have to draw anything if you don't want to. And if you don't like what you drew, just hit undo and get rid of it. And if you undo too far, you can do this to get whatever it was back. I don't think I like the little bit drawn on the sleeve, but I don't know. We'll just leave it how it is and see how it goes. So once you're done drawing whatever you decide to draw, you can go to um, export and name this one. Just change the MD to HP and save it. Now we're going to go to subtool and we're going to duplicate this mesh. So now there are two of the same exact mesh. Turn the light or the eyeball off so we're only seeing one of the two and we're gonna create a low poly version from the drawn on version so go back down to geometry and then we're gonna Z remesh it since it's a t-shirt we're gonna take it down to about five if it's a shirt or pants I aim for five if it's a dress, I do about 10 because that doesn't translate perfectly to Blender. So in Blender, it's going to end up being after adding the EA body and stuff. It's going to be about 11,000 polys, but I always try and keep it under 15 for shirts, 15,000 because that's TSR standards. And like I said, it's not a requirement, but it's just kind of a standard I've started following. So that's a good number. So that's why I shoot to remesh it for around four. And you'll notice this part, depending on your computer, may take a long time because you're going from a 1.7 million poly mesh to a 4,000 poly mesh. So you see it loading up here, just let it do its thing. All right, so we've got something that is a little poly that we can work with. Don't worry, it's not going to look this choppy when we're done with it. We see we're at 4,000 poly count. We can go into transform and click poly and look at the lines. The lines look really good. So now we need a UV. So go to Z plugin, UV master. Click poly groups and unwrap. Then it disappears and it loads. Go back to that same place and click uh, flatten. And just take a look. That'll be your UV map. So we can go back to unflatten and export this as low poly. And that is all you have to do in ZBrush.
Thanks for tuning in. Hope to catch you in the next part. This has been a Fatal Rose Creation production. Mm-hmm.